Yo, what's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Coogie Cutters. In today's episode, we're making solid motor mounts for this thing. And welcome back. So originally this video was going to be about me removing and replacing the stock steering rack. But as I was filming, it got boring pretty quick. And I mean, it's the steering rack, so there's only four bolts and um, yeah, just the outer tie rod ends. So uh, in order to remove the steering rack, I actually had to lift the motor because uh, one of the brackets was hitting the steering rack. So I figured, you know, the motor's already up, the mounts are already off. I might as well just, you know, make some solid mounts because since day one, I really didn't like the way that the hockey pucks were sitting. Uh, the bolt was offset and it wasn't really sitting on the hockey pucks, right? So it was kind of wonky and I was just like, you know what? Might as well make some solid mounts since we're here. So enough talking, let's get to it. Alrighty, so to kick this whole thing off, we got to remove both the intake and exhaust manifolds. I don't feel like working around them just to get to the motor mounts or to the steering rack. So, and the good thing about this is that the manifolds aren't in permanently yet, so there's no gaskets to worry about. So now we have the manifolds off, let's take a look at what we're working with here. Taking a look under the car, we can see that this steering rack is in some serious need of some love and care. Uh, the passenger side boot is ripped into three different pieces and there's just dirt and spider webs everywhere. So from this angle, there are a few things that we can see that are wrong with this whole hockey puck setup. The obvious ones are the bolt holding the motor to the front subframe isn't fully seated up against the engine mount. Even though the nut on the other end of the bolt is very tight, we can see that the lock washer isn't even compressed. So it's not locking anything into place. Uh, the hockey pucks are offset, even though both were clamped and drilled as a set. Finally, this bracket here is the one that I mentioned earlier that is hitting the steering rack. Now, all of these problems will be fixed for sure by making the solid motor mounts. So the first bolt I'm loosening here is for the splined U-joint that connects the steering shaft to the pinion. Now, this thing hasn't been serviced in who knows how long, so it took some force to loosen the bolt. Now with the steering shaft loosened, it's time to remove the two bolts holding the driver's side of the steering rack in. You can see here that I am struggling a bit to take the bracket out. I end up giving up and I move to the passenger side because the motor is so low that it won't even let me take the bracket out. On the passenger side, there are no problems removing any of the bolts. In fact, the bolts were already pretty loose. I didn't even need the ratchet, so that was pretty sketchy. They come out easily and there's even enough room to remove the bracket. Now that all the bolts have been removed, all that's left is the A1 racing tie rod ends, which are simple enough to remove. You just back off the adjustment nut and uh, back them out. Now we pop off the steering shaft and we try to remove the steering rack. Now the rack had no room to be taken out, so it was time to bust out the engine hoist. And I mean, like I mentioned, the engine had to be lifted off the front subframe in order to get the steering rack out. Now, keep in mind that the hockey pucks on the passenger side as well as the transmission mount are still bolted in just to keep some sort of positional reference in the engine bay. And so we have finally arrived at the very first step in making these solid mounts. Now the stock mount will be removed and used as a template for the block side of the mount. Okay, 
So this was my first lazy attempt at making solid mounts. Now all I did was I cut off the bottom part of the mount and welded a piece of tubing to it with a bolt sticking out of the bottom. Now it worked, don't get me wrong, but the problem with it was that it ended up pushing the motor forward, causing the ATI pulley to hit the V-mount bracket. And that was a big no-no. So at that moment was when I realized that it was time to make mounts from scratch. Alright, so on to the materials that I'm going to be using to make these solid mounts. Now, please keep in mind that this is just a general example of how to make solid motor mounts. There are many different ways to make them using different metal types, different thicknesses, different tubing types, different tubing wall thicknesses, and all of that. So, this is just the way that I am making mine. So, I'll be using quarter plate 5 inch flat stock, two half inch bolts or 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, with nylock nuts, a piece of eighth inch wall, one and a half inch tubing, the failed mount just to get the bolt pattern and design, a tape measure, some form of welder. Now with this project I wanted to practice my TIG since it's been a while, and finally an angle grinder. To start I'm going to cut some rough squares just to work with since I don't want to be carrying around a huge heavy piece of quarter plate around. Now the bandsaw is optional. If you don't have one, then have fun spending 10 years cutting through quarter plate with an angle grinder and fiber wheels. Uh, it's totally doable, but a bandsaw just works faster and makes kind of less of a mess. And suddenly our work pieces have appeared. Next we'll take our failed mount and trace out the design and the bolt pattern onto the quarter plate. Select the drill bit that is closest to the hole size for the mounts. Here again, the drill press is optional, but it helps, especially when we're drilling almost 11 millimeter size holes. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can do this with the regular quarter drill, but you know, it's gonna take all day just to drill four holes into quarter plate. With all of the holes finally drilled out, it's time to check the fitment. I mean, everything looks good, so we'll leave this here and we'll continue on to the next part. Next, we're going to be making the part of the mount that's going to bolt the whole thing into the front subframe. Now, you're going to need two pieces that are roughly two and a half inches just to accommodate the one and a half inch tubing. I'll put the squares into the drill press and drill holes closest to the middle of the squares as possible. I'm just eyeballing these since they don't need to be precise. The 2.5 inch square has more than enough material to make full contact on the front subframe. And here we have them. As you can see, they're not perfectly square and the holes aren't perfectly dead nut center. But as long as they're close, that's all that really matters for this application. Before we get to welding, you want to make sure that the pieces you're going to be welding are perfectly clean so I'll give these a nice little acetone shower. Okay, on a serious note though, mild steel that's been sitting outside in a steel yard has a lot of mill scale and acetone won't clean that off at all. So either a flap wheel or a super aggressive Harbor Freight wire wheel will do the trick. See the difference it makes? Shiny. So now we insert the half inch bolt into the square. Now just an FYI, the head of the bolt has also been wire wheeled thoroughly because these are zinc plated. Uh, when you weld anything that's zinc plated, the fumes created could potentially kill you. So don't breathe that stuff in. I'll mount these on top of some base magnets just to let the bolt dangle through and I'll weld it to the plate. 
And so we encounter our first ugly welds. But these don't matter because the inch and a half tubing will cover them up nicely. So I got a bit ahead of myself here and I ended up cutting out and shaping the block side piece uh, using the bandsaw and I finished shaped it with the angle grinder. Uh, all of the milsko has also been removed and it's ready to be welded. With both of these pieces mounted in the engine bay, I have lifted the engine a bit more to correct for the bracket that was hitting the steering rack. All that's left to do now is to cut a piece of tubing that will connect these two and will be done with the mount for this side. To get our piece of tubing, I'll take a rough measurement just to see how much tubing we're going to be needing. Next, I'll use an angle finder to see what angle I'll need to cut one side of the tubing. Now I know I could have just eyeballed the angle on the tubing, marked it, and cut it with the bandsaw, but I've had this notcher for years already and haven't used it, so I'm using it now to cut the angle needed for the mount. And here's our piece. I actually flattened the piece of tubing with an angle grinder since it didn't sit flush up against the plate. Again, I know, I should have just used the bandsaw, but it fits. I'll lay a couple tacks down and then take it back to the bench and fully TIG weld it. Now, I was trying to put as much heat as I could into the quarter plate since it's very thick, but in the process, I also ended up pushing a lot of filler wire in and ended up with bird crap welds everywhere for this side. I gave it a nice wire wheel to polish the turds, but at least it ain't walky like hockey pucks anymore, you know? Now that this side is done, we'll replicate the process on the opposite side. I'll outline the mount and drill the bolt holes out. Weld the bolt to the square. I'll mock everything up and weld it all together. So I changed the setup on the machine and I ended up getting more dimes than bird crap. So, you know, we're doing something good here. To finish the mounts off, I'll apply a solid three coats of the good old new Ford Gray. And here we have them. Both mounts are done. The steering rack is back in. And yes, I was able to put the rack back in without having to lift the motor which means that all of the issues that we started with in the beginning of this video have been corrected. Also, if you haven't noticed already, I cleaned up the engine bay a little bit more by removing the rest of the body harness. It was getting very annoying having to move it around whenever I wanted to do work in the bay, so that thing went out. And the stock power steering lines have also been removed, obviously with the removal of the stock rack, so I'm going to be replacing those with something nice, so maybe in a future video. But yeah, for now, we are done. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. If you guys got any questions or comments, then drop them down below. If you guys are interested in seeing what the future holds for the S12 or for the KA or for any of the builds that are going to be on this channel, then feel free to subscribe. So with all of that out of the way, I shall see you guys in the next one. Peace.